that can touch or legs that can walk and ears that can listen and eyes that can see and raised my sisters and brothers memories made a pastor to lead us this altar to pray stripes that can heal and the blood that can save oh I have been blessed It's the greatest honor. Father to Our flag stands for freedom. It is worth. She stands in the harbor. This liberty calls. Oh, they gave some, but some gave it all. Oh, so we could be blessed. He's my soul. Just a song, he's the reason I sing, oh, cause I have been blessed, oh, I have been blessed, God's so good to me, oh, precious are his thoughts of you and me.
stand up there. Sisters and brothers, oh, memories a pastor to lead us, this altar to pray, stripes that can heal, and the blood that can save, oh, I have been blessed. Oh, He's a shoulder you to yourself. lean on when I am down. Hallelujah. A rock where he leads me when I go overwhelmed. Thank you, Lord. The place where he hides me. He hides you tonight under his wings. Oh, he's not just a song. He's a reason I sing. Oh, yes, I Yes, I have been blessed. Oh, he's been so good. Yeah, sorry, my choir. I have been blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, what a song. Are you blessed tonight? Oh, you can do better than that. Are you blessed yes, tonight? Yes, yes. We've been blessed. Yes. We've been blessed. Yes. We're blessed in our coming. 
We're blessed in our going. We're blessed in the morning. We're blessed in the evening. Come on out here one more time. Come on, church. Worship him. And I have been blessed. God's so good to me. Precious are his thoughts of you and He's a good, good God. Let's open up with that chorus, Refiner's Fire. Ready to do your will. 
You know, that's what we want to be today, isn't it? Set apart for Him. Clean. Ready to do His will. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you and we thank you, Lord, at the beginning of this service, Lord. We just ask that, Lord, we just that you just show yourself to us. Lord, that you just be with us today, Lord. That when we walk out of this house this morning, Lord, that we are changed because of the encounter we have with you, Lord. Lord, we just ask that your will be done in all things. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. 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 I want to welcome everybody here. Darnell, good to see you. And we got people online. Marlene, we, we just, we're just glad that you're here. Uh, we're going to sing, Come Holy Spirit. We, we want to welcome the Holy Spirit here because we know that where he says where two or more are gathered in his name, there he is in our midst. So let's sing this. Mm -hmm. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, sweet Spirit, I pray. Come in our strength and your I need him more today than I ever have in my life. And I know we all can say that at some point. If you would, and if you have your songbooks, turn to page 483. Are you washed in the blood? Are you washed? Are you fully trusting in his grace? 
got a job to do people and we'll be talking about that a little bit today springing in the sheep this time we're going to go ahead and take our prayer requests. Are there any prayer requests out there? I know we got a couple unspoken online. Uh, anyone else? Okay. Uh, Eddie, go ahead. On the first day, God created the dog and said, sit all day by the door of your house and bark at anyone who comes in or walks past. For this, I will give you a lifespan of 20 years. The dog said, that's a long time to be barking. 
how about only 10 years, and I'll give you back the other 10. And God saw it was good. On the second day, God created a monkey and said, entertain people, do tricks, and make them laugh. For this, I'll give you 20 years lifespan. The monkey said, monkey tricks for 20 years? That's a pretty long time to perform. How about I give you back 10 like the dog did? And God again saw it was good. On the third day, God created a cow and said, you must go into the field with the farmer all day long and suffer under the sun. Have calves, give milk to support the farmer's family. For this, I will give you a lifespan of 60 years. The cow said, that's kind of a tough life you want me to live for 60 years. How about 20 and I give back the other 40? And God agreed it was good. On the fourth day, God created humans and said, eat, sleep, play, marry, and enjoy your life. For this, I'll give you 20 years. But the human said, only 20 years? Could you possibly give me my 20, the 40 the cow gave back, the 10 the monkey gave back, and the 10 the dog gave back? That makes 80. 80, okay? Okay, said God. You asked for it. So that is why for our first 20 years, we eat, sleep, play, and enjoy ourselves. For the next 40 years, we slave in the sun to support our family. For the next 10 years, we do monkey tricks to entertain the grandchildren. And for the next 10 years, we sit on the front porch and bark at everyone. Life has now been explained to you. There is no need to thank me for this valuable information. I'm doing it as a public service. And if you are looking for me, I'll be on the front porch. Amen. <laughs> Prayer request for today. Justin needs prayer for the loss of his father. Nora needs prayer for physical healing, spiritual comfort, and to find inner peace. Pray for our pastor to find the strength as he faces the many challenges in his life. Twala needs prayer for physical health, healing and spiritual comfort. Robin and family needs a spiritual touch. Sean needs prayer for depression and inner peace. Peggy needs prayer for spiritual comfort and inner peace. Please pray for the following CCU ministers who need a special touch from the Lord today. Reverend Dale Diggs, heart procedure. Reverend Joe Dillard, physical need. Reverend Don Simor, physical needs. There are many others who are dealing with personal situations in their life and his prayer for physical well-being, loss of loved ones, financial problems, spiritual needs, depression. Let's keep the following in our spiritual prayers as well. Pray for our missionaries who are bringing the word of God to so many people around the world. Lord, we pray for all those who are in desperate need of help in order to survive. Victims of hurricanes, the homeless, the hourly and nursing homes, and the physical and emotional destitute people in our society. That our unsaved loved ones and friends will come to know the Lord, that their eyes will be open to see the truth. Pray for protection for our nation, our city, and our community. Pray for our church to be able to reach out to our community through donations and support in times of need. Pray for our church to be able to grow and to meet our general expenses. Oh God, may we have a moment to speak with you today. We pray that your love will be evidenced in us today so we can draw others to you as well. We know that if other people see love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control in us, they, will, they may find you, God, as well. Direct our steps as we follow you, Lord. God, you are our ultimate source of strength for our heart, soul, mind, and body. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Eddie. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord, and we thank you that through all things we know that you are the master of all. Lord, you give us that freedom we need this morning to go through the times of trouble and trials that we, that we have. Lord, we just ask that, as, that you touch these individuals, Lord, that you touch Justin as he goes through this time of mourning and grief. Finding your father dead is, is hard on anyone. Just just dealing with the loss of a loved one, Lord. We just, we just ask that you touch him, Lord, in such a special way. Lord, we ask that you touch Robin and her family this morning. That that you know you give them that comfort they need this morning and that spiritual touch. Bring them around to a place of understanding. Lord, we we pray for the, the addicts and the homeless in the area here, Lord. Lord, that you touch them, Lord, with me being a former alcoholic. I know the, the stresses and, and trials of being addicted to 
exalting and Lord, we just we just send out our heart to them, Lord. Lord, just touch them this morning. Lord, we pray for for all the other requests that are out there, Lord. Lord, for these ministers that serve you so faithfully, Lord. It's Mr. Seymour Don, I know him personally, he's a nice guy. One of the nicest you'll ever meet, Lord. We just said that you touch him and Joe Diggs. Lord, just just deal with these these ministers, Lord, and it's with such love and care, Lord. Lord, we pray for the ones that are here, Lord, that you touch each and every one of them, Lord, the unspoken, Lord. The ones that we can't hear, the ones online, Lord, we just ask that you just touch them. You touch them, you answer the prayers that you said that you would. You said that if you come to me and you pray, I will answer. That I am always with you. I will never forsake you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for all those, those promises that you've given us. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Holy name. Amen. Glorious freedom. What a wonderful day. At this time, we're going to go ahead and take our tithes and offerings. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give back what you so graciously have given to us, Lord. We just ask that you bless the gift and the giver, those who can give and those who cannot, Lord, for you know the hearts and the, and the minds and the situations of all men. We ask this in Jesus' holy name, amen. Sister Betty, you know, there's times in my life that I, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about, you know, what I'm going to do and where I've been, and you know, sometimes it's just hard to not remember the past that I lived. You know, I hadn't always been a Christian, and there's things in my life that I haven't always been ashamed of. But you know, the cross, it covers all those things, and I like this song. The song is Calvary Answers for Me. Just listen to words. the power he lost when the cross had its day. And gone are the morning when fear without warning would come and again had its way. Now in Satan Reminds me of things I regret. I bring a Calvary, lest he forget that high on the mountain a 
Answers for me. You know, it's sometimes what we forget in life. That once we come to God, we don't have to worry about our past. Well, we're not going to talk about our past today. We're going to talk about our present. We're going to talk about what it is we're supposed to be doing. We're going to talk about ministry. What is ministry? And who's supposed to be doing it? And what's its purpose? And there's a couple different parts to this, and today I'm going to start out, and if you have your Bibles with you, turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And we're going to start out in the first verse. This is from the NIV. Uh, The Bibles in the pews are New King James, so there will be a little bit different translation, but the words should be similar. Ephesians chapter 4, and in the first verse, it says this, As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have been received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, 
just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. That is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean? Except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions. He who ascended is this very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in an order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect mature, the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him whom the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. That's an awful lot of words to be spoken. But the first words that Paul says is, as a prisoner of Christ, I like the way he puts that, I am a prisoner of Christ. In some places, he calls himself a servant, in others, a slave. And in this case, he calls himself a prisoner. All these things we think of as negative connotations, but here, Paul is saying it in, in the most gracious of terms, I choose to be a prisoner. How many of us would choose to be a prisoner? <laughs> you know, I have spent my days in jail, and I tell you, it is no fun to sit in a room with bars. But that's not the prisoner that Paul's talking about. Paul is talking as a prisoner, as one who is indebted to the Christ. I like that. And he says, walk worthy of our calling. Now, how do we walk? That's the question. How are we to walk this morning? And what he says, but he's basically referring to this whole passage, is how we are to lift one another up in love and how we are to minister to one another. But what is ministry? We talked last week, last Sunday night, on the servant. How Christ, when his disciples were all together before he was to be crucified, he came and he took his, his cloaks off and he tied a, a towel around his waist and he got down and he washed his disciples' feet. Now that being God, you know, he was, he was he, you know, he came down and humbled himself enough to come down in the form of a creation and yet he even humbles himself even more as he goes down and washes that creation's feet, the lowest part of the creature's body, that which has touched the ground and the dirt and the mud and whatever else they walk in. You remember, they didn't have automobiles. They had, they had animals. They had horses. And you were walking in dung. So when you washed that person's feet, you were washing all that off of that person's feet and you were touching it. In most places, the servants of the house were to wash the feet, but Christ Himself got down on His hands and knees and washed each one of the feet, even the one that was to betray Him. That says a lot about our Savior and our God this morning. And here, Paul is talking about our ministry, but what is ministry? Ministry is nothing more than service. Ministry 
is nothing more than service. John puts it this as I was talking about, we were talking about John, how he says this, and Jesus says this, you call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should have, should do as I have done for you. Verily, ver, verily, very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor a messenger greater than the one who sent him. So Jesus says, I set the example as servant, and I'm telling you that you should do to others. And now we're not talking about the literal act of washing of one's feet although that could be incorporated. One of the, the traits that my, my mom and dad used to do was they would portray this. They, they would actually wash one another's feet, and one week they would, one would do it, and one week the other would do it. Not that they required it because they were well bathed, but as a symbol of servanthood, a symbol of humbleness. I always thought it was kind of funny because at that time, you know, I was out in the world and I would, I would just laugh at him. But I can see the, the, the symbology of the situation. In Acts, Christ says this, In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words, of, this is Paul, not Christ. The Lord Jesus himself said it is more blessed to give than to receive. And that is true. Christ himself said is is blessed are they that give. Right? You can go to Matthew 5. Those that give will receive. And sometimes we get caught up in our own lives and we'd rather receive than to give. But what is ministry? It is giving. It is the giving of oneself to someone else to serve that person. Paul, goes, we go back to Ephesians 4.1, As a prisoner of the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy. How do we do that? Through ministry. Be completely humble. You know, my, 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 my friend back there in the... Uh, back uh, of the room, she said, Jim, you need to work on your humbleness a little bit. <laughs> She's always telling me <laughs> that, that I, I'm, a little, I'm, a, I'm a little uppity sometimes. And you know what? We all are. We all get that. We get a little full of ourselves sometimes. And the Lord puts people in our lives to kind of keep us in a humble state. Betty keeps telling me she's my thorn. <laughs> keeps me on my toes. But we need to live a life worthy of our calling, humble, gentle, patient, bearing one another in love. And sometimes that is the hardest thing in the world to do, is it not? To bear one another in love. There is only one body, one spirit, just as we were called to one hope. You know, that's the, that's the thing. There's not one body for the Catholics, one body for the Baptists, one body for the Methodists, one body for the Church of Christ. We're all one body. you got to realize that. We all have different functions. We all do different things, but we're all part of the same body. Too often we get in our own little or the own little worlds, and we think we're the only ones that matter. We're the only ones that count. We've got to realize we're just only one small part of the whole. Well, we're no different than the Baptists. You know, we have a different, a different viewpoint on certain scriptures, but we're all part of the same body, and we're to be humble and subservient to one another in all things. So what is the purpose of ministry? <laughs> the purpose of ministry. So we know ministry is to serve. So most ministry should be comprised of two factors. 
Ministry should be comprised of two factors. One, spirituality. And two, practicality. Spirituality and practicality. Spirituality is this. We should be trying to lead others to the acceptance of Christ. Is, it not, is that not our main goal? Is to tell others, to witness to others of what God has done for us with the goal of bringing them into the fold. To bring them to Christ. So that they don't spend an eternity in hell. That is the primary goal of our mission, of our service, of our ministry. To help others to see the light of Christ. The second is practicality. If we see someone in need, what is our job? We are to help those pretty people. It is, it is to reach out and help them physically, financially. Whatever, whatever service they need. Some people need prayer. You know, we have several prayer requests. One of them, a young man who lost his father. And the way he found out that he lost his father is traumatizing. And as, as Christians, we are to reach out and to pray for that young man and do whatever it is that we can do to help him along. But there's always, there are homeless. And our job as a church is to help those that we can. And we do our fair share. We could, we should, you know, I, I would love to do more, but financially we're not capable of doing it. That's why we team up with different organizations. We try to help those that can't help themselves. The goal of ministry, the purpose of ministry, is to build up the church. As the writer of Hebrews says, he says, Lord, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he promised his faithful, and let us consider how we may spur one another toward love and good deeds. So my job is to spur Darnell to do good deeds. I, <laughs> spur Eddie, spur Noreen. My job is to help you guys to bring us all together and say, hey, let's do something good for somebody. And, and to spur love for one another. To, to, to come together in love. And say, you know, Betty, I love you. <laughs> I, I, I even love Eddie every now and then. <laughs> you know, we, we, we love one another as a body. To spur one another to those so that what? So that we can go out and serve the community in which we're in. To evangelize, to reach out, to say, hey, I've got good news. And it's a wonderful thing when you can honestly say, I've got something that may help you in the situation you're in. Now, let me ask you this. I'm going to ask you a question. Does everybody have a ministry? in their lives? Does everyone have an active ministry in their lives? The answer is yes. Everybody has an active ministry. If you're a believer in Christ and you're breathing, there's a ministry in your life. A lot of times, we, we, we have a tendency to think that ministry is only for the pastors. You know, we're the full-time guys that they get up here and speak the Word every day. Or every Sunday, we're, we, we work at the church, so it's our job to do all the ministry. But that's not always true. All Christians are ministers and priests. Did you know that? Did you're a priest. Matthew 28, 18. It says, Jesus came unto them, 
saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. He said, go out and teach all men to do what I already taught you to do. My job is to teach you what Christ has taught me so that you can go do what I do. You have an active ministry. Ephesians 2.10 We are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God before ordained that we should walk in them. 412, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. We are to walk in the good works He created us for. And these are preordained. What does preordained mean? It means before the formation of the earth, God already ordained that we walk in these works. Now, I'm not one that believes in predestination as we say that some people are going to heaven and some people are going to hell. And God already said this is the way it is. I say that God knows the beginning and the end and He knows where you're going to be today. And He created these works that you should walk in them where they're at. If you're a believing Christian, we have good works to do. If you're not a believing Christian, then we need to be at an altar of prayer. Because the alternative is not very good. I, I'm not, I, I don't like to, to be the doom and gloom guy, but there, there are two places you can go. There's, you're either going to smoking or non-smoking. I prefer non-smoking. Because <laughs> it gets a little hot in the other place. It's warm. It's not a party. A place of torment. But we have service to do. All believers are considered priests. <laughs> you know, we, we when we, we talk about priests, we kind of think that only the only priests that are out there are in the Roman Catholic Church, right? Kind of got a negative connotation in some walks. You know, priests, we're not priests. You know, that's the Catholics are priests. But no, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says this. First Peter two, third verse, now that you have been that you have tasted that the Lord is good as you have come to him, the living stone rejected by humans, but chosen by God and precious to him, you also, like living stones, are built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. Offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. What are those sacrifices? It's the sacrifice of praise. It's the sacrifice of prayer. It's the sacrifice of doing what He wants us to do rather than what we want to do. That's a sacrifice. You know, we sing a song, and we haven't sung in a while, sacrifice of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Sometimes in the midst of our heaviness, we have to sacrifice praise. As a priesthood, we are here to offer sacrifices to God. Now, in the beginning, when Israel was formed, the Levites were the priests, right? We all know that one tribe of Israel was designated the priesthood, the Levites. And they were brothers and sisters of Aaron. But when Christ came, the priesthood was disassembled and we became the priests of God. The Levites are no longer the priesthood. We are. (laughs) You know that? You're a priest. That's where we kind of get that. We're here for a purpose. You know, Christians should minister by meeting 
the needs with love and humility. You know, sometimes it's kind of hard to meet needs with love and humility, isn't it? Especially the needs of someone we don't like. You know, we're supposed to minister to our enemies, not just our friends. We're not just to minister to the people we like, but sometimes those that we don't like. Jesus, Jesus said in, in his, his Sermon on the Mount, we, I kind of consider that his masterpiece, Leonardo's, you know, Da Vinci's Mona Lisa. He says that if, if we just love the ones that we like, are, don't we, are we doing anything different than anyone else? We only greet the ones that are family and friends. Don't even the pagans and the publicans do that? We're, we're, to, we're to minister to, to the people out on the street regardless of whether we like them or not. With love. That's kind of hard, isn't it? Especially when, you know, when that person has done you wrong in the past. The Bible says that if, if you slaps one cheek, you to turn to another. And some people find that hard to do. And as ministers in Christ, as believers in Christ, we're called to be a minister. We're called, we're called not only to love that person, but to minister unto them, to meet their needs with humbleness. Just as Jesus washed his disciples' feet, we are called to to do the same thing to the ones that have done us wrong in the past. It says this in Acts 3, brothers and sisters, choose seven men from whom known of full of spirit and wisdom. You remember what this is. There was a dispute about the Hellenistic widows of the day. And, and there was, there was a, a major dispute, and they were trying to figure out who was going to meet the needs of these widows, right? So the disciples, they decided, well, we're going to pick, I want you to pick seven men. I don't care. The, all, the, the only requirements is they're full of the Spirit, and, and they're, 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 they're chief among you. And I want you to take those men and put them into service. Just like me saying, Eddie... I'm putting you into service. You, I don't care if you've been trained for it tonight. Come on. <laughs> Come on up. You're, you're, you're going to do this. And that's what they did. And, and so they chose seven among them. But as Christians, that's what they did. They didn't, you know, these guys didn't, didn't grumble or complain. In fact, one of them even gave his life for them. We know the story of Stephen, right? Stephen was chief among those seven men. And he was one that was out ministering to the widows when Saul got a hold of him and incited a riot. And because of his testimony, it cost him his life. But you know, Jesus says if you're not willing to give it up for me, you're not worthy of your calling. And isn't that what Paul said at the very beginning of this? I beseech you as a prisoner of Christ to work worthy of your calling. What is your calling? Your calling is to be a minister and a priest. To be humble. To serve. Not just what you think you should serve in. <laughs> but to serve. You know, we all have a witness, and that's our primary mode of service, is it not? My primary mode of ministry is my witness. My witness is how I relate Christ to others. I was an alcoholic for 22 years. I was up to a fifth a day, and I ended up on the skids. I was on the rocks, and I, I was homeless. And Christ picked me up, and he, he gave me, he brought a family to me, and, he, and they picked me up out of the dirt, 
literally picked me up out of the dirt and brought me to their home and gave me a place to live. And I ended up going to church with them. And they ended up coming back to God. And it's been 12 years, 10 years since I've had a drink. And it's been, it's been a while. And because of the love and because of the ministry of that pair of, of individuals that had <laughs> that didn't even know me from Adam, because of their love, I am now where I'm at today. Not through anything I did. But that just shows you how ministry can affect others. How ministry and how our witness, because you know what? They were ministers in Haiti. And I, they regaled me with stories of how they, they went and ministered to shamans in Haiti, in, 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 in the back jungles, and how these, these shamans were sometimes demon-possessed. And you know, I, I was brought up Pentecostal in a home that was Christian, but I walked away. So God works miracles even in my life. And I've had, I was a process engineer for many years and I've had 160,000 pound tools fall out and I should have been dead. For some reason, God's kept me alive. That's my witness. But am I living my witness? Am I living my life according to to my calling. That's worthy of my calling. And this is what we really have to walk about. Even if you have a witness, even if I'm I, if I if God kept me alive, even if I'm standing up here, if not if I'm not living my life rightly. If I'm not living according to the way I should be living, then my witness is null and void. If you leave out of here and I leave out of this church and I go and I go down to here, down on Eight Mile to Tycoons, and someone find, walks in there and sees me in there, my ministry is null and void, is it not? Now, for you who do not know, I drive by there Thursdays and Fridays going to work. And I know it's a gentleman's club. And I have been in gentlemen's clubs in the past, and I know what they're there for. And I'm going to tell you, that is not a place that I should be. <laughs> and as a Christian, none of you should be there. <laughs> but if I'm, if I'm leaving here and doing stuff like that, then I don't have a ministry, do I? I don't have a service. I don't have a, a witness. I can say all day long, God is good, God has done me good. And then if I'm going out and living my life in sin, what good is it? If I, if I know to do good and I don't, that's sin. We've got to watch what we're doing. So what is ministry? So what is the content of our ministry? What is the content? And I'm almost done here. The content is basically this. Our content is to be building up the body. That's all there is to it. Building up the body. To love one another, to equip one another for service. My job is to equip you. God gave certain offices in the church, but those aren't, those aren't necessarily what every office is. There's more than just those offices. Noreen has a ministry in the church. She does audiovisual work. She does the cleaning. She does the yard. You know, her ministry is a ministry of service. 
Eddie's ministry is a little different. You know, mine's a little bit more outright. Betty's, her ministry is music. But is that the only ministries that we have? <laughs> you know, I put a verse in here. It says this, 1 Peter 4, 8. Above all, let us love each other deeply. Because love covers a multitude of sins. Our chief, first, and most, the best ministry we have is that of love. Love for one another and love for the world. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him. If we don't love the world enough to go out and and show them the error. Show them the, the, the light of the cross. Then we're missing the point of our ministry. goes on to say, Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength of God, the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ, to Him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Ministry is not something that's hidden. I'm going to tell you this right now. Our ministries are not hidden. God gave each and every one of us ministries. We need to find out what they are. What's your ministry? What do you believe? Do you believe in Christ at all? Are you serving in a place of love? Are you serving in a place of humility? You know, that, that's what we need. Service. And, you know, we don't have to do this on our own because, you know what, God gives us gifts. And we're going to talk about those gifts tonight. God gives us gifts, spiritual gifts, to help us along on our journey. And, and these gifts are what, what we're getting to because, you know what, these gifts are, are often misunderstood. You know, we, we kind of focus on the gift of tongues and, you know, the gift of wisdom and the gift of miracles, but yet those aren't the only three gifts that we have. What does God say? Where there are prophecies, they will fade. Where there are miracles, they will disappear. But love, faith, and hope will always remain. And the greatest of these is love. Love is our greatest ministry. Are you serving in love? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, at the close of this service, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, that you, that you give us that love we need for our brothers and sisters outside these walls. Because these walls are not meant to hem us in, to keep us here, but to help us to learn so that we can go out and reach others for your name and for your glory. Lord, we just ask that you touch in each and every one of us, Lord, that you give us a boldness, Lord, to go out and, and, and to spread the good news that you came and you died for our sins this morning. Lord, we just ask that you just you just touch us, Lord. You help us. You go with us. Lord, as we go our separate ways, put a hedge of protection around us that we may once again come unto your table and feast from your word. We ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen and amen. Tonight, 7 o'clock, we'll be talking about spiritual...